the end, is the movie worth watching? I would say I don't think that's a spoiler. Is that a spoiler? This is the easiest thumbnail I've ever had to take. Just, just Dune. Hello everyone, I'm Monica and welcome back to my channel, Millie Reads, where I talk about books and things. And guess what, guys? I live in Spain, which means that the Dune movie has been out for like a week now. And I actually went to see it the weekend it came out. And most of my audience is from North America. So I'm here to tell you all about the Dune movie and whether you should watch it or not and how well it sticks to the book and whether they did a well job or not. I love Dune, okay? I love Dune. I consume Dune in audio format, like I consume most of my books, especially books that are this big. <laughs> and I absolutely loved it. It's one of my favorite sci-fi books, and it's actually not one of my favorite sci-fi books because of, all, of, of anything other than the fact that um, the story really drew me in. However, Dune has a really big glaring problem and it's that the first 200 pages or so are confusing as all hell. Now, here's where the movie comes in. I think the movie does a really good job of simply like streamlining all of that stuff that doesn't really get explained to you in the first 200 pages and just explains it. So I think in this case, I the movie did a really good job for those of you who have tried to get into Dune and can't get into the book of really streamlining that part of the book and making it more understandable and making it really well done. As for the casting, I have to say that this is kind of a person to person thing but i think the casting is fabulous i think that the characters the way they were cast how they interacted with each other is exactly what i wanted and i finally actually connected with a lot of the characters that i hadn't connected with in the book because the book is so full of characters whereas in the movie they kind of streamline that and make you really see how these characters interact with each other and why they're so beloved. I, I really loved all the characters. However, I want to talk about one character whose changes might upset some people. I know my husband didn't like that part, but I actually did. And that is Je the character of Jessica. Um, she is the concubine of Duke Leto, who is played by Oscar Isaac. He's played to perfection by Oscar Isaac. And um, she is also the mother of Paul. I felt, and my husband also felt, that they did her a little bit like, um, she cries a lot. <laughs> she cries way more than she cries in the books. I think in the books they try to portray her more as a warrior, whereas in the movie she is more of a motherly figure and she really cares about Paul. For me, that, that wasn't a bad thing. That was actually a really good thing to see Jessica being so worried about her child and so heartbroken about the fact that she knew that by having a boy, this was what was going to happen, that he was going to become a either a, a, a messiah possibility or a messiah himself. So I think that she feel, you, you feel her guilt over that because she wanted this, she wanted it, but at the same time, once she has it, she feels really remorseful of it. That being said, let's talk about the set pieces. This movie is a orgasm for your eyes. It is so beautifully made and this is coming from somebody that doesn't really like CGI. I don't like CGI in my movies. I think that if I see CGI and it's really obvious CGI, then I'm, I'm, I'm out of it. I don't like it. Well, in this case, I think the CGI actually works for the movie. Now, the movie does have the typical director's very, um, should I call it like very peculiar palette, you know, all the, I think that the, the places we go, the, the, the planets we visit all have the same coloring. And even, even Arrakis has the same, like kind of, I guess, bluish tint to it. But I found that we were very easily, um, like led through the world because of what was going on around it and the the structures and everything it was just all really well done um i i think that there was a lot of uh geiger influence geiger geiger i don't know <laughs> um the one the the man who created um the xenomorph there was a lot of influence for him especially for the harkonnen house which i thought was divine because i always pictured 
the Harkonnen house, very Geiger-esque. Other than that, I have to say, the, 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 if you haven't read Dune, the book is divided into three parts. So there is book one, which is, I believe, called Dune. Yes, book one is called Dune. So that's what we're going to see in the movie. The problem with book one is that book one is just basically the introduction to everything that's going to happen to the world. So the movie is kind of slow. I personally really like slow movies, but if you don't like slow movies, this is going to be a really hard movie to get through because it never starts because we're just setting up the pieces for the second movie, which is actually kind of rare in um, like um, film because usually the first movie is like the bang, the, the big, the big, what is it, bells and whistles. And then the second movie is kind of boring and then the third movie is like really good. In the case of Dune, the first movie is all set up. Everything is set up. Like, there's action, don't get me wrong, there's definitely action, but it's slow. Even with all the action pieces, even with like a big war that happens, it's still a really slow movie. But I still really loved it. <laughs> I mean, I went into it with really low expectations because I think that this is a really hard book to make into a film. But if you go into it knowing that this is just the setup for the following movies and that you're not going to get a lot of action or anything, well, unlike, you get a lot of action, but it, it doesn't feel like there's no resolutions. This movie has no resolutions. And when the movie's just about to start, when we're gonna start the hero's journey, is actually when the movie stops. So if you don't mind that, then I say go for it, watch it. I definitely enjoyed the movie. I did think it ran a little long, but I wouldn't have it any other way. I loved, I'm a very visual person in, in the sense that I love big, gigantic set pieces that clearly were obviously CGI, but mo a lot of it was um, done, you know, physically. <laughs> I don't know how to say that. Like they, they actually built the sets. <laughs> And um, I love the coloring. I, I, there are so many things that I want to talk about that you don't care about. In the end, is the movie worth watching? I would say yes. In fact, I would say the movie is worth watching over reading the book. I think that if you want to get into Dune, but are having a hard time getting past those first 200 pages where it's really hard to understand what's going on, Watch the movie and then get into the book. You're gonna understand all of that, all that the book doesn't explain to you. I thought it was really well adapted and I just, I loved it. <laughs> that is the tea. I really loved the movie. So when the movie comes out in the US, I hope that you will go see it because I really wanna see the rest of this trilogy made. made. I really wanna see where they take it. I wanna see what happens. Um, I think, uh, I cannot for the life of me say the, the director's last name, but I think he did an amazing job with a tremendous, difficult book to adapt. So if you like sci-fi, if you like big piece, big space opera sci-fi, if you like family drama, there's so much family drama. And honestly, I think Ox, 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 uh, <laughs> Oscar Isaac kills it in the movie and I think everybody does a great job. I don't think there's a single actor where I was like, oh my god. I think Dave Bautista nails it. I think everybody did such a good job and I think when you watch a movie that people really try, like when you see that they're really trying to make something good, I think that shows in camera and um, that that is something that the audience wants to see. and. I think that that's worth your time. I, I mean, again, I love really slow moving movies. And this is a slow moving movie that is the setup to the hero's journey, not the beginning of the hero's journey. So yeah, you're not gonna get a lot of development from Paul, except like the very beginning of his journey. And then the movie ends. It, it, it's the setup for a second movie. That's it. This is really the setup for a second movie and this is um, the director showing you what he can do and I think he can do amazing things. So that's it. That's my really shitty <laughs> movie review of Dune. 
I hope that you guys enjoy it. I hope that this helps you figure out if you want to watch it or not. I definitely recommend that you give it a try. I know that it's going to come out on, um, it's, it's at HBO Max, I don't know. But um, I definitely recommend that you watch it in the theater because there are some incredible moments of just big spaceships. And I haven't had a feeling of such enormity since I've seen like old Star Wars movies when you see that Star Destroyer you know on screen it's just unbelievable I know that it's very tempting to watch it on your laptop but I definitely think that you'd be missing out um, and I think you'd definitely be missing out if you don't watch this movie at least that's my take on it and who am I but a girl on the internet that really likes books <laughs> Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much to my friend Rachel for suggesting that I make this video. I didn't realize that you still have a month to decide whether you want to watch this movie or not. So maybe this will help. And anyway, without anything else left to say, I hope I didn't like spoil you or anything. Um, I mean, most of you have read the book or know what the book is about. I just want you to know what you're getting yourself into when you go into the movie so that you don't have these expectations that cannot be met. Because if you go into it with the right expectations, I think that you will really, really enjoy yourself. Or at least, at least enjoy yourself a little bit. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for all of you that stick by me. I know that, um, I, I, I'm gonna add, like, that if you are if you don't care about anything else and you just wanted to watch the Dune review, you're done. <laughs> it's over. <laughs> but um, I just want to thank everybody that um, st sticks through my, like, um, I guess you could call it my mental health issues. Because I know that so many other booktubers can just push through and make two videos a week, three videos a week, no matter what. And I feel so bad that I'm like, oh, I can't do this. I just can't. I, I, I can't film. I'm really going to try. Um, and, 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 I, and I know you, those that have stuck by me know that I know that you don't really care and that you want me to take care of myself. But I think that one of the things that helps me take care of myself is to have a schedule. So I think I'm going to just set up another schedule. And even if I have read two books in a month, I'm just going to talk about books because that's what I love to do. So thank you so much for sticking with me. And I'll see you in another galaxy far, far away. Bye.